Well, time now for a, a fun event all aboard for a big thing happening this weekend. The Columbia Gorge Model Railroad Club is opening its doors Saturday morning. This weekend is the 75th anniversary Model Railroad Show and Cora Harlan joins us this morning in North Portland at the Columbia Gorge Model Railroad Club. You've got a preview of the event, Cora. Oh, this is awesome, Ken. Emily, we are looking at Union Station or a replica of Union Station right here as it uh, kind of uh, existed at, at one point in time here. And, and as you look at that, you recognize a lot of detail from the uh, existing Union Station, and that is the name of the game here. Uh, attention to detail. Notice some of the small people figures in there in the, in the front there to replicate uh, some of the folks. And uh, uh, this is just such a spectacular show. You have the Albina Yard in the back there that's now closer to Swan Island. Carl kind of lifting up and giving you a shot back there. It's something spectacular. Cynthia Leonard is with the uh, Columbia Gorge Model Railroad Club. And, and uh, there's so much to appreciate here about trains. Yeah. But as I'm walking around here this morning, also get a real appreciation for the history and some of the industry that we've had here, right? Well, it's very important uh, in model railroading that you have a, a reason to, to have a layout. And uh, you can choose different things. We chose history. Yeah. And uh, the city of Portland, the, the Pacific Northwest, has a lot of fantastic history. We're a big railroad industry. Tilt, area. tilt the camera up, Carl. There you're not seeing it yet. Yeah, there you go. See on That's the top, top level. Right yep. yep the uh, Burlington Northern Santa Fe on the very top coming around the bend here. For folks who are not familiar with this, this is a replica of the train station as it existed and exists from Union Station all the way out to Mary Hill in the Columbia River Gorge. And that is uh, a depiction of some of the, some of the, I suspect, some of the stuff on the Washington side yeah, of the, the Washington Washington side side here. Yeah. river yeah. towards, uh, towards Wishram, <laughs> towards Roosevelt. Okay, so uh, I want to just give you a couple of things here. We're talking a little bit about history and some of the industry. They actually have a coal a coal dump set up here. Carl, why don't you go first? And this, this, they're bringing the uh, the train back up here. Now this actual actual replica, and you'll be able to see this during the show. But watch him back that coal car up there, and this is exactly how it would have happened back they, in the day. They right? actually did this. I uh, uh, when I first found out, I didn't believe it because it's like uh -huh. why? Uh, but they they would put it on a piece of track and just just. Uh, tip it over like this. Several people had different things uh, to do. Uh, the, um, uh, another way was to tip it um, end to end. That's how it would have been back in the day, just doing it right like that. All right, that is really cool there. And that would have, this is in the area of Troutdale that I think we're kind of looking at here. Carl, turn to your right and let's head up the Columbia River Gorge as we come uh, through uh, through Trout, out of Troutdale, heading east now. This will be until we get to roughly uh, Columbia Multnomah Falls right here. There's the uh, Multnomah Falls Lodge in here. And we talked a little bit about the attention to some of the history of industry. Logging, of course, a big part of, of uh, the, 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 the history of Oregon, too. Carl, check that out. This would be, this is in... Wishram, right? right? Well, no, Wishram's no, on the sorry. other side. Um, Hood River area. Yeah, the Hood River area. Basically, uh, there was a lot more logging, of course, in those days, and uh, this could be just about anywhere on on the river bed um, at the time. Uh, Did you see them, that log, that log thing there, and they just pop those logs. That's how it kind of would have worked, and they'd dump them in the water and tie a big log raft together and and run it wherever it needed to be run there as that little mechanical thing takes the logs up and drops them right into the river. Just that is cool. They would actually manipulate the cars like that. It's that is really amazing. cool. Really cool. And then uh, a little bit uh, in the back there, Carl, they've uh, actually updated some of the uh, some of the old things to, to replicate some of the fires, of the forest fires that are burned back there. See the, uh, the cotton balls up there that are lighting up. That's lightning. There's smoke. That's meant to replicate some smoke and, and fire and all the rest of that. Boy, we could talk for hours and hours about uh, uh, about the uh, Columbia Gorge Model Railroad Club. If you want to come out here and check it out, the show is the next four weekends, the 12th and the 13th, the 19th and the 20th, the 26th and 27th of November, 3rd and 4th of December. There's a little admission fee, but this is uh, what pays the bills here. It keeps all these children that you see in front of you here, and I say that. Uh, not patronizingly, but a lot of children with gray hair in here who like model trains, which is a compliment to most of them. I'm getting a lot of smiles here. The Columbia Gorge Model Railroad Club.
Uh, and then they, you know what else? I forgot to tell you this, Ken and Emily too. If you're interested in a lot of stuff that you're looking at here, they've got QR codes that you can scan and find out a little bit more history on your phone as you're kind of walking through here. So it's part railroad, it's part history, it's a lot of fun to look at, and some painstaking detail to replicate the rail lines through the Columbia Gorge and the surrounding, uh, surrounding lines here. Just spectacular. Yeah, a lot of moving parts there, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad you pointed out the people behind the scenes. Uh, how many people does it actually take to run that display? How many people does it take to run the display? Let's see, Cher, what do you, what do you say? Well, huh. It uh, during the show we have at least 35 people working. Wow! wow. I see, yeah. 35 working. I see yeah. eight or nine people. Yeah, eight or nine bare. people in front of me right now. Yeah, so just it's a bare, that's just a bare minimum. Yeah. Just just for you. Just for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I usually get the bare minimum. That's oh, all right. Wow. I don't take that personally. Um, no, we have about uh, 35. Though is the yes, number. 35. We have six members uh, running trains. We'll have about uh, uh, probably about six, four to six uh -huh. in the. Um, Lumber will have seven. a lot of a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, it's just incredible. There's and so many small areas. You gotta very, very cool. You gotta Thanks keep uh, you yeah, gotta keep them working. Gotta keep them working. Yeah. I, 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 really I hate neat. to I hate to run. We gotta go, but it's yeah. it's really really neat to see, and especially to get in, in there in person and, yeah. and just mm -hmm. see all the details. You know, no wonder the there's really cool. right dozens there. of people. Yeah, yeah really I didn't neat. realize it took that many people. I knew yeah. it probably took about a dozen or so, but more than that. There's mm -hmm. so many, you know, small areas that have their own thing going on. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, that's that's one good indoor idea this weekend. <laughs> if you're looking for ways to stay inside and stay warm.